So another fairly solid Warhammer 40k reveal today. We've got new Chaos Lords, not one but two big discount Chaos Battle Force box sets, some interesting details from the new Codex, and some Xenos goodness for the Genius Dealer Cult Brew Brothers, and Scouting Jaegers for the Leagues of Votan. Let's take a look at the big reveals for Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking new model reveals. In this one I thought I'd do a roundup of the 40k relevant thing as from the big new overnight preview at Adepticon. As it goes it was a fairly big one, really quite a lot of miniature reveals across plenty of different game systems. The focus of this one was a bit more on Age of Sigmar given that it talked about the new edition plus a good few other releases for the fantasy setting. But I still thought we got some pretty interesting stuff for 40k as expected focusing on those Chaos Space Marines. The Warhammer 40k Twitch livestream does seem to have changed around a fair bit. Rather than going for an actual livestream for the event itself, where you just had a couple of guys talking over images of the new things and engaging with the chat a little, they've decided to redo it for this one at least. I'm not sure if this one will be the new style for all their reveal shows going forward, or if this is literally just a special effort for the Age of Sigmar big reveal show. I feel like I quite liked the overall discussion style feel of the video and it did feel really quite professionally put together but I must admit I don't think they've got the format right on this particular one. The main thing that most people are tuning in to see is actually to see the miniatures properly and we've really only got quick flashes of actual new miniatures on the screen given they talked over some pre-recorded videos. Not really enough time to properly get a look at the models that they were actually unveiling. And for some reason they didn't really seem to focus that much on the new features and things for the 40k miniatures at least. Maybe more talking a little bit more about what they represent and how they feel in game, rather than actually having a look at the miniatures in detail, which I thought was an odd choice. Fortunately they followed it up with the articles being posted over on Warhammer Community, so we still get good images of them and a little bit more explanation as to the models themselves. It did just seem a bit of a weird way to do it though, certainly interested in the other stuff but I feel like a little bit more focus on the actual miniatures would have been nice. Moving swiftly on to the actual reveals though, as we expected, Chaos Space Marines are indeed coming. They were the last codex to be announced for spring. It really made sense that the reveal show would be them, and it has focus on them pretty much entirely. Announcing the codex and giving us a hint of the flavours of the new upcoming detachments for it, two new Chaos Lords, one with a jump pack to replace the old one that they removed in 9th edition, and perhaps in a slightly unusual move for a faction launch, they've given them not one but two different Battle Force box sets, each of the Lords heading up one of them. I guess interesting enough for Chaos Space Ring collectors to have two big launch discount deals on the go. Both fairly fun ways to get a whole bunch of Chaos Space Rings on the table, though it did sound like on their stream they really were trying to push some people to get both of them, given that they have the new Lords in them and they made sure that the miniatures don't overlap. Otherwise we've got Kill Team Termination, a versus box between Votan Hernkin on foot and Gene Steeler Court Brew Brothers plus a Patriarch and Brood Coven set. Both of those are at least fairly interesting releases I think compared with some of the Kill Team upgrade sprues they've done in the past. They also teased Mechanicum for Horus Heresy, no miniature reveals there unfortunately but it basically means that they're redoing their Mechanicum Automata in plastic. And of course, perhaps the biggest thing was that they're announcing a new Age of Sigmar edition with an animated trailer. A pretty cool piece, I thought, with the Stormcast fighting the Skaven, newly re-emergent into the fantasy setting. They did make a very weird decision with the Age of Sigmar launch, though. I'm not sure why they decided to show off an animated trailer, but no actual miniatures whatsoever. The stream chat really weren't too happy about that, and I could kind of see why. Certainly didn't feel like it had the same hype as the 40k 10th edition reveal trailer which not only came out alongside at least a few teasers of miniatures plus maybe a few more concrete hints as to how the game edition might work. Doesn't seem like it was the best launch for that one. Jumping into the 40k stuff though, let's start out with those juicy chaos reveals. It looks like the offering for the followers of the dark gods are two new chaos lords, one on foot and one with a jump pack, two new battle force sets as mentioned, one headed with each lord, the Chaos Codex which we got some details for, and I guess that that will probably be all we get for the Chaos Space Marines, besides maybe the update of the Combat Patrol, which seems to have happened for the rest of the Codex launches. There weren't any other hints that there'd be any more on the way for the Chaos Marines like there were for the crews on their reveals, and usually by the time they reveal the Codex itself and give us details on things and talk about battle forces, I feel like it's unlikely we're going to see anything else. Maybe a shame for the Chaos Bikers, who definitely need an update, there's plenty more stuff that they could do with as well, maybe something like a multi-part mutilator dual build kit, 
or perhaps some Fallen. Starting out with their new models, first up we've got the Chaos Lord on foot. This is the one that we had teased on the Monday social media post. I guess he's going to be a multi-part Chaos Lord to either go alongside or replace the one from Blackstone Fortress who had the Demon Hammer. I do quite like his miniature though, I think he's quite fun. This one has a fair few more multi-part options, Chain Axe or Thunder Hammer or a Spiked Power Maul that they called an Accursed Maul in his right hand. And then Power Fist or Plasma Pistol on the left hand, this one's the Power Fist option that you can see here. That's kind of interesting for the War Gear loadout, I guess it might mean that he gets a slightly tweaked data sheet to reflect mixing and matching a Power Fist with a different option. There's also the choice of a Horned Head versus a Bear Head, and I'd estimate that pricing when he comes out will probably be around £26 or US dollars in line with other characters. Overall I think he's a fairly fun model, a reinterpretation of a classic Space Marine miniature. It's covered in skulls and chains, and has a nice classic Chaos Trophy rack to display his enemies, and has a tattered cape swirling around him. Overall, I think they've done a nice enough job with that miniature. They also gave us a few other pictures of the other option for the Chaos Lord for how to assemble him. This one painted up in a nice Alpha Legion sort of colour scheme. Here you can see that Accursed more modelled, and the option of the Demon Hammer, the Plasma Pistol and the Power Fist options in the offhand. On Monday, people were quick to identify this miniature as being basically the updated thing that we saw in the teaser trailer. It's an old Metal Chaos Lord that's long out of production. Looks like this guy's pretty much the spiritual successor to that one. He does share a whole load of design features with axes and plasma pistols and a lot of similar styling on his armour plates. The other new character miniature was this Chaos Lord with a jump pack. A model that caused really quite a lot of consternation when they removed that from the Codex last time round, back in 9th edition. People weren't too happy as it had been an option for really quite a long time, and they'd literally just been selling the Twin Lightning Claw miniature until a month or so before the Codex went out. We'll be quite welcomed by Night Lord players, I think. Nice to have HQs to lead your packs of Raptors. For the Wargate options for this guy, apparently it's Power Fist or Power Axe for his main melee weapon. Plasma Pistol or Bolt Pistol in the other hand, looks like it's held aloft, sort of taking aim at the enemy and hefting the axe above its head. Or you can swap them both out for a pair of Lightning Claws, again maybe harking back to the previous Chaos Kit. Could be pretty interesting for gameplay I think, getting free stratagems and scary melee hidden within a Raptor squad. I'd be interested to see whether or not he can lead Warp Talons or not, I feel like that would be a big deal if he could. I'm genuinely not too sure which way Games Workshop would go on that. I know the standard Chaos Lord on foot can't lead Possessed, but then they're a bit bigger and chunkier than your standard Chaos Marine. And I'm not sure if the Warp Talons will be close enough demon kin to regular Space Marine size to be allowed to run with a Lord. In any case, I think the Sculpt is nice enough once more. It looks pretty big and pretty imposing, borne aloft on a wreath of smoke. And again, maybe denoting his status with a whole load of trophy racks. You can see the bear head versus horned head option on this guy as well. Plus the one painted up in the new Night Lord's colour scheme is modelling the stylish lightning claws. Feels like it's not going to be the worst time to be a Night Lord's player I guess between the Jump Lord release and those new guys coming from the Kill Team Nightmare whenever they eventually bring that out. I guess my only slight criticism of this guy might be that he just doesn't look enormously crazily different to regular Raptors and feel like he might not be the hardest model in the world to kit bash if he had a mind to it. I must admit I do overall like him, I think the sculpt is pretty nice and dynamic. Then as mentioned we've got the backup of the Chaos Battle Forces, Battle Force 1 is called the Dread Talons, this one maybe feels like the slightly weirder of the two to me, this one's led by the Chaos Lord with the Jump Pack, as a heretic start his Demon Prince along for the ride and 10 Raptors or Warp Talons, then interestingly enough that fast moving stuff is all paired with a Cultist Horde, a Dark Commune, 8 Accursed Cultists and 10 Regular Chaos Cultists. I guess those guys are at least all fairly recent Chaos Kits, most of them having come out with the 9th edition Codex, so it might not be the worst for newer Chaos players to get copies of. My guess is for these two new Battle Forces, they'll probably be priced similarly to the Christmas Battle Forces, given that that seems to be the pattern for the ones without a Codex in, so most likely around £140, €180 Euros, or $230, so big expensive box sets, but still would be a significant discount on buying all the kits separately. Otherwise, the second battle force is called Veterans of the Long War, a Chaos Lord on foot, 10 Legionaries and 10 Terminators, 5 Possessed and 5 Chosen. 
more than the last one, I feel like this one it definitely feels a bit more like the core of the Space Marine Army as opposed to the extra add-on bits. I think these are all pretty handy kits for a Chaos player who's going to have a resilient army to rules changes to have access to. And again, most of them are at least relatively recent models. The Possessed and Chosen were from 9th edition. The Terminators and Legionaries from 8th, I want to say. As mentioned, it does look like Games Workshop are trying to encourage people who want an absolutely massive Chaos Army to potentially pick up both of them. That would be a pretty massive financial investment, but to be fair, you would have a huge Chaos Force all ready to go with that. It will be interesting to see just how popular these are. I feel like both of them are pretty good. I feel like the Veterans one might be the more popular of the two, though. Finally, we've got the Chaos Codex reveal. This one has kind of similar cover art to the previous one from 9th edition, just editing the background as they've been doing with quite a few of the new ones. They didn't go into too crazy detail about this. They did mention that they still get dark packs and there weren't any mentions of changes to that. They only gave us a few vague hints as to new detachments, saying how there'd be 8 detachments in total, 7 new ones plus the Slaves to Darkness one. Between their hints in the stream plus the preview from Warhammer Community, we got hints like Cultist Horde, Demon Engines and Tanks, Sneaky Alpha Legion, followers of Vashtor and Renegades and Pirates. They also hinted that the Word Bearers archetypes one might wind up being represented by the Slaves to Darkness one. I kind of feel like they might have been well served by a Demon Kim focused attachment with loads of support for Possessed. We don't know that that's not coming yet though. So far it looks like we've only got proper clues for 5 out of the 7 new detachments. I guess one interesting thing to see will be whether or not Emperor's Children are supported. If not, that could be a clear hint that they might be on their way later in the edition, much as we had that same treatment with the World Eaters in 9th. I guess there'll also be at least one new data sheet for the Jump Pack Lord. No idea if the Chaos Space Marines are going to face any model calls kind of similar to the previous releases that we had. The Tau and the Necrons both lost some fine cast characters. I guess the Chaos Space Marines do have some characters at risk with that. Lucius the Eternal and Huron Blackheart maybe come to mind most notably. Given that Games Workshop's keeping the big exciting Battle Force box sets coming, I will say now that I'll do the channel giveaway for May to be for both copies of this box set. Three winners getting both one copy of each of those Battle Force box sets. If you'd be interested in entering for that, then feel free to check out the end of the video where I'll talk about it a bit more. Moving on to the Xenos though, we've got Kill Team Termination. This is another one of their Versus box sets, and it's kind of surprising that this one's being announced before Kill Team Nightmare has even been released. Feels like that might have had some sort of major delay in it getting to people who want to buy it, given that they released, given that they teased the Night Lords Kill Team really quite a long time ago now. It was last year in December. The next one after Nightmare, though, will be Kill Team Termination. This one pits Gene Steeler Colts versus Leagues of Votan. And it looks like it's going to be another one of their more miniature focused box sets compared with the ones in 9th edition. Looks like if they're bringing out terrain with it, that'll be available as a different kit. They didn't show that off here. The only terrain bits that they had were these plasma generators. For the main focus for Leagues of Votan, there's a completely new unit in the Jaegers, a sort of scouty infiltrate type unit for the Leagues. And for the Gene Steelers, you get the Brood Coven kit that's pictured here, containing their mighty Patriarch leader plus the Primus and Majors XQs, and then the Brew Brothers look like their Acadian kit with an upgrade sprue to customise them to make them more Gene Stealer cult looking. I guess it means that the value of the box set will be really quite heavily slanted towards the Gene Stealers here. It looks like they essentially get Cadians plus their own sprue, plus really quite a valuable character sprue. It'll be very interesting to see how that eventually winds up being released individually. If they're boxed in with the Brew Brothers, it could be an interesting sort of value kit for the cults. For the new miniatures though, starting with the Votan, we have these Jaegers. They're a scout and infiltrate unit for the Votan, built by Games Workshop's announcements as a self-sufficient commando unit, used to working well behind enemy lines and without support from the rest of their kinsmen. I must admit, the look of the models is kind of fun. Not entirely sure what I was expecting for a Votan stealth slash commando unit, but Votan in trench coats probably wasn't it. Looks like they have their trench coats over their void armour as well, which is an interesting sort of styling there. Not sure if they're doing anything else besides just looking stylish and trying to hide from enemy line of sight there. Kind of hard to imagine it's to keep warm over the void armour. I guess for 40k rules they might well be an infiltrators type unit, given they sort of feel equivalent to things like Space Marine Scouts or Orc Commandos maybe. 
will be interesting to have a league of Botan units to deploy in the midboard and hopefully secure a bit of territory before the game starts. They did mention a couple of weapons specifically by name in the article, there's one called a Magna Coil Sniper Rifle and one called an Adaptive Payload Missile Launcher. Not sure if that's just the more standard, I think, L7 Missile Launcher I want to say it's called. Plus a whole bunch of the rest of them have some pretty interesting stuff, all kinds of plasma knives, bolt shotguns and bolt pistols on different specialists. Here's a look at the full squad and there's 10 of them in total. My guess is that when we get a look at the full kit reveals for them, there's a good chance they might have the option of bolt shotguns or maybe plasma blade and pistol for the people who want them. And then the rest of what you can see here are the more kill team specialists that you can assemble. Sometimes they get 40k rules, sometimes they don't. I feel like there's a good chance the one with the demo charge will get some 40k rules. One's got a fun sniper type weapon and I guess that is the Magna Coil sniper rifle to give the leagues of Botan a powerful sniper gun. There are some other interesting things like fun pistols, a dual pistol wielder and a dual plasma blade wielder in the squad. I noticed the leagues of Botan demo charge guy on the top left is from a rumour engine. I was wondering whether those charges might be potentially from Gene Steeler Colt before. Overall I think they're kind of fun. When ranked up I think they do the job to look how I'd imagine a Leagues of Votan Scout Commando unit might have looked. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts down in the comments though. These guys do seem to answer several of the unanswered rumour engines. I had wondered if this Ridge Camo Cloak in particular might be for a Leagues of Votan sniper and it does seem that that's the case. I believe that sort of crossbow type pistol on the bottom left as well, that also was from a previous one. Finally we've got that kit for the Jeans to the Court Brew Brothers. For some reason they didn't decide to say actually as much on the stream or in the articles or anything. But I'd guess that this is probably going to be an upgrade sprue kit for the Cadian Shock Troops kit. They needed to update the Brew Brother one seeing as the last one they made was for the previous Cadian kit. And it isn't really quite as easily compatible. The Jeans to the Court Brew Brothers are essentially the corrupted Astra Militarum that they often fight alongside. Currently they're playable in game with allies rules alongside the main Genius of the Cult army. You can take a certain proportion of your points as Astra Militarum. But given that these ones have some interesting war gear loadouts, I guess it's not impossible that they might get their own data sheets to represent this specific squad in the Genius of the Cult army. For the most part they do have their classic Brew Brother sort of look. Swollen craniums and slightly mutated but maybe not quite as far gone as some of the Acolytes or Neophyte hybrids perhaps. Maybe being able to be a bit better at laying low until the time of uprising arrives. And then from there they use their veteran military experience to serve as bodyguards and personal retinues for major figures within the cult. Taking a look at their figures en masse, it looks like we get one with an icon bearer, a box operator, some guy with a shotgun more clutching a gene stealer icon, there's a sniper, a shotgun one. I guess the guy on the bottom left with the bag is probably the equivalent of a medic with a sinister sort of syringe. And over on the right we have a couple of more normal guardsmen with las guns, a melter gunner and the squad sergeant who seems to be mutating a bit more than the rest with a nice jeans dealery claw. Overall I feel like they're a nice enough kit that does the job. will be interesting to see whether they're more a fluff and flavour and aesthetic sort of upgrade or they get their own data sheet in some way. For other things, there wasn't much going on in the Horus Heresy in this one, unfortunately. They did say that there was just going to be a teaser as opposed to a model reveal. I'm kind of surprised they haven't shown off the Horus Heresy command squad, though. They did tease the standard bearer for it back in December. Looks like the next major release for Horus Heresy, though, will be for the Automata of the Mechanicum. They basically had a grainy sort of teaser trailer with an image of Mars flashing up the Mechanicum logo. And I feel like they wouldn't put the effort in of putting an actual entire teaser trailer in there unless there was actually a substantial model release. Feels like they're going to be the most likely to get a solar auxiliar sort of treatment, Admech Automata and Plastic for Warhammer 40k The Horus Heresy. Unfortunately, I'd say that as per other Horus Heresy releases, I feel like they're unlikely to make the jump to 40k Adeptus Mechanicus. Kind of a shame really, as it would just be quite nice to flesh out the army with a whole bunch more fun Automata in a similar sort of style to their Castellan robots. I think they're kind of unlikely to go that way though, given that Forge World and Heresy releases have just not really been supported in 40k this edition. We did get Kratos rules for 40k back in 9th edition, but so far the theme of releases in the Horus Heresy have been not to get 40k specific rules if they get new models. 
and indeed they took a bunch of things away by translating a few things like Contempt of Dreadnoughts into the Legend section. Otherwise we had a sinister sort of vault door teaser for Necromunda, not entirely sure what's happening there, but apparently something sinister is stirring under the ash wastes, and the old world reveal was a range refresh for the dwarves, basically re-releasing all of their old dwarf range for the old world. Lots of dual build plastic kits and lots of retro miniatures coming there, alongside a new miniature reveal, which is this sculpt for a dwarf king on shield bearers. Kind of an interesting idea that they're going for for the old world so far. Mainly the thing that they've been doing is just refreshing and re-releasing classic plastic kits. Maybe just releasing a few centerpiece or showcase sort of miniatures to add something new to the army. An interesting blend of old things and new things that are made to fit in with the old. The Dwarf King on Shield Bearers was again one of their teaser images that they had in the lead up to the reveal show. In any case, look forward to hearing what you guys think of the 40k reveals. I feel like it's still not been too bad in terms of miniature reveals. Two new characters for Chaos, two new battle forces, a few hints of the Codex, plus two new squads for the Xenos between Votan and Trenchcoats and Brood Brother Gene Stealer Colt. Let me know your thoughts on the releases or any ones you particularly do like or don't like down in the comments. As mentioned, I'll just go over the channel giveaway for May, which is announcing maybe just a little bit on the early side here. As mentioned though, given that it's a big exciting Battle Force announcement, I thought that I'd make that commitment early. Three chances for channel viewers to get both of the new box sets, the Dread Talons ones with the Jump Lords, Raptors and the Cultists and the Demon Prince, plus the Veterans of the Long War with the Lord on foot, Terminators, Legionaries, Possessed and Chosen. Hopefully that'll be an instant Chaos Warband or Army for three of you watching. As per normal with the channel giveaways, there's two equal ways to enter, both of them links down in the video description. Either you can support the channel on Patreon for any amount, it is what allows me to keep on doing what I do on YouTube quite so much, and that gets you automatic entry into the prize giveaways each and every month. Or you can choose to support the channel on social media completely for free. To do so, do all of these three actions, subscribe to the YouTube channel and like the Facebook page, and then to actually enter the draw, then a post appears on the Facebook page on the 1st of May to be entered into the random number draw. Respond to that post with an image of a 40k miniature or imagery, along with your name and the date handwritten within the same photo, the last bit just to deter Facebook bots and spammers. From there I put all the entrants into a random number generator and pick out the three winners. The results for that one will be announced on the 4th of May, so a little way away yet. Given the lead time on Games Workshop reveals though, I feel like they'll probably be releasing around about then. At the moment of course there's still the Custodians and Orcs one to go, that'll be the April one. So feel free to join up to the Patreon page and support the channel, or check back on the Facebook page on the 1st of the month to enter for that one, and I'll announce that on the 4th of April. All the links to those things are down in the video description if you are interested. In any case, I thought the reveals were interesting enough, not 40k with the prime focus of this one, but still kind of fun. Look forward to hearing your thoughts as always, and given that it's now quarter past 5 in the morning, I'll do what all of you guys down in the comments seem so keen for me to do, and go and get some sleep. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more like this. I'll certainly cover Games Workshop's news and reveals as they come out. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos, then as well as giveaway entries, there's a few other benefits to signing up to the Patreon page. You get to see certain videos early, semi-regular votes as to what comes next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month as mentioned. If any of that's of interest, then the link's down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.